Today's video is going to be about heavy metal ions. Now by heavy, it just means heavy in atomic mass compared to all the other elements. Hydrogen has an atomic mass and an, or an atomic number of one. I think it has an atomic mass of one as well. But then you're gonna have elements like cadmium or arsenic and stuff like that that have atomic masses in the sort of triple digits. So that's why they are considered heavy compared to a lighter element such as hydrogen. Now heavy metal ions are renowned to be incredibly toxic to the human body, yet they are found somewhat commonly inside of the world that we live in. And I'm gonna go through some of the places that you can find them, as well as a few effects and a few sort of mechanisms, not really in a lot of detail in terms of mechanisms, but a few things that they can just do to the body that are not good for you whatsoever. Now one place where you can find a surprising amount of heavy metal toxic ions is inside of fish. Now, understandably, the positives of fish and the nutritional benefits that they give probably will outweigh the negative effects that the heavy metal ions that are found in a surprisingly high quantity that they have on the body. But still, it's probably worth knowing that fish, especially ones that are going to be low quality in terms of their, their like sourcing and how they're fished and how they're processed and stuff like that, they're going to be ones that are especially bad. And I'm talking about that's going to be the ones that are found in the sort of fish and chip shops, not the ones that you find in like a gourmet cuisine in like a really, really fancy West restaurant. Those fish are probably going to be fine but the kind of fish that you're going to get in your fish and chip restaurant they're going to have quite a lot of mercury and stuff like that in them mercury is the stuff that's found in a lot of thermometers that's one place where you can find mercury i guess but i'm really going to only be talking about in this video the kind of places where they can be really commonly found i doubt there's going to be anyone stupid enough out there to try drink the sort of lick out of a thermometer and i please beg to god that you don't try anything as stupid as that but it is very surprising how polluted our oceans and therefore fish actually are a lot of the companies and stuff that pump water and sewage like out into the oceans and out into freshwater systems means that a lot of the fish that we fish they're going to have a lot of toxic stuff in them like mercury as i've said before and while this isn't enough to damage the fish you may have heard of a process called bioaccumulation where like if if you think of a food chain a human for instance may eat four fish a week but like the fish that the human eats they're going to maybe only eat two smaller fish that aren't going to have very much mercury in them because their body body's capacity like won't let them and they're, they're small enough so they're not going to be able to absorb as much because of the way that the poison like accumulates up different levels of the food chain that means that humans being top of the food chain take on the brunt of the pain when it comes to poisons being in the like food chains and food systems so that's just a warning to you that even though fish is a very very healthy food if you imagine the amount of mercury in a fish and chip shop fish and compared to like a gourmet fancy restaurant fish, one's gonna have a lot more mercury or other toxic metals in it than the gourmet one. Now the second place where heavy metals used to be found, but it's not so much anymore, is pesticides. A lot of pesticides containing toxic heavy metals, such as arsenic and thallium and all that sort of stuff, a lot of them have been banned, but I felt, I'm, I, I read somewhere that the residues of that sort of stuff still remain inside of the food system. And it, as I say, bioaccumulation still has an impact today on the kind of things that those pesticides had on the ecosystems. But it's something that's worth knowing about. I never knew until I did research on this that any kind of pesticide ever contained toxic materials, but part pesticides today don't contain as many toxic heavy metals, they contain other toxic substances, which probably, while may not be as bad, are still just as bad. But the, the thing that's quite bad about um, toxic heavy metals, and this is where I'm gonna go into a bit of the mechanisms of how they act, is that they're cumulative poisons. So while many people will say things like, with pesticides, the dose makes the poison, and so that means the pesticides and stuff like that, they're all fine, it's all right, because it doesn't kill you immediately. And it's like, even though there's a tiny, tiny bit of like arsenic or, or toxic chemicals in there, for instance, it's fine because it's not enough to kill you. The problem is with heavy metals is that these are cumulative. They will enter cells, they will mimic the healthy minerals inside of the cells. Some minerals such as zinc are needed to help enzymes sort of function. Maybe there'll be like a lead ion or a arsenic ion that is gonna fit inside of where the zinc ion would have, fit, would have been able to fit inside of. And it's just gonna stop the actual zinc mineral being able to fit inside of that active site but the arsenic's just not actually going to do anything it's just going to sit there so that that's how these things are quite toxic because it's going to mean that certain enzymes that are incredibly crucial for your body to function aren't going to be able to work whatsoever because they're just going to have heavy metals just stuck inside of them and they aren't easy to go away they don't just suddenly disappear into the abyss they will stay there for a quite a long time probably or maybe even forever until that enzyme just has to be excreted by the body and your body would have to use up loads of energy to make new ones so even though the dose makes the poison for these kind of things i mean while that is factually correct because even if you're having an apple a day with all these pesticides in it while the positives will 100 outweigh the negatives 
this arsenic or this thallium or whatever metal it is back in the olden days that is going to be having a massive effect on your body and while the good stuff in the apple would also have an equally good effect it's worth knowing that you're probably not getting the most amount of the, the apple as you potentially could and the same could still probably be said for today as well and with things like bioaccumulation those like heavy metals they stay in the fish for a long long time and that then when the fish eat, when you eat the fish you get those heavy metals as well and it's just not not fun now the third place that heavy metals can be found is pollution now pollution air and water pollution are the main sort of forms if you live in a big city you're probably going to succumb to both of these forms of pollution air pollution from like smoking car exhausts smoking is one way that you can ingest a lot of heavy metals and so can you can also do that from vaping as well but things like car exhaust and stuff it's all going to have a lot of just nasty stuff in it all the industrial plants that release loads of toxic gases that's all going to have heavy metals in it and it's going to go around the air you're going to have like all this smog and stuff like that it's not going to be very nice and you are going to be breathing in that kind of stuff which just isn't good for you they're small enough to get into the bloodstream and they're small enough to still be able to go through with their mechanisms as it would if you just ingested it in food with water pollution this is mostly from things big companies again putting stuff in the system not intentionally they're just trying to find an easy way to get rid of the waste that they produce that's going to mean that they don't have to spend more money to actually find an efficient way so they can like have a bigger unit cost and stuff like that that's how businesses work if they want to profit maximize or whatever but in rural places they won't really succumb to air pollution all that much because when you are in a forest like this it is a lot it has a lot cleaner air than when you were in a city like i can feel it when there are cars driving past me like just and i'm walking along a path i can sort of feel the exhaust is like actually physically hurting my nose in a weird sort of way but i don't experience that if I'm in a forest because there is realistically no air pollution whatsoever because there but there will be water pollution in rural areas because you will experience something known as hard water because you may not have the most sophisticated water systems and water filtering systems like the big cities have and even though that that can't stop everything you will have hard water where the amount of minerals that are inside of your water is more than in a place that has soft water and it is actually interesting because you can kind of notice the taste difference between the two different types of waters it's very interesting and now the fourth sort of thing that i wanted to talk about in this video isn't really related to heavy metals but it's related to an actually quite a light metal known as aluminium aluminium is found inside of cans and it, in it is toxic when it's ingested just like things such as lead cadmium and tin and all that sort of stuff they are toxic aluminium is just as toxic even though it's quite a light metal because it has no purposes in the body it will still fit into the active sites like arsenic or lead wood and it will stop actual healthy minerals to be able to act on the body in their good and healthy way so aluminium is found inside of the drinks cans but because it's toxic if you just had an aluminium coke can and there wasn't like an inner lining inside of the coke can made from a material that i'm going to talk about in a minute then the aluminium would get in, into the coke and it would be a more toxic thing to ingest in a weird sort of way when you have your metal water bottles though that isn't aluminium that is probably something known as stainless steel or steel or something like that so it's not going to be toxic for you when you drink but the sort of lighter more easily comp compressible sort of aluminium foil and aluminium, aluminium cans and stuff that's all not going to be good for you it's going to be able to transfer some foods but because aluminium is a food grade it can't be in direct contact with food when it's in packaging when it's in processing or any of that sort of stuff so they will put like an inner lining of bpa for instance or any other resin plastic chemical bpa is like an estrogenic and it's very toxic but it's also like a cumulative poison so it won't kill you in a low dosage immediately but it can build up and cause birth defects and a lot of horrible stuff but something like a metal actual metal water bottle that has got stainless steel is going to be much better to drink out of than a can that's going to have sort of bpa lining because aluminium isn't food grade and that's about all i have to talk about when it comes to metals in the diet and in your lifestyle and all that sort of stuff but with that i recommend subscribing because i love this community of young tribal people who are willing to improve themselves so much more than they already have and good luck